Hello and welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome here to Hollywood Burbank Airport on this gorgeous morning. The weather is absolutely perfect. It is going to be lovely flying today and uh, I'm really excited to bring this flight to you from this location that really oozes immersion. It oozes atmosphere and that's exactly what the aircraft that we're going to be flying does as well. Huge thank you to Raul from FS Reborn for giving me the opportunity to fly his brand new FSR 500. It's a gorgeous aeroplane. There's a ton of features in here, which uh, I'll be going through. And uh, it's just really interesting for me also personally. I don't really fly glass cockpit. I do in the uh, in the H145 helicopter and, of course, now the H160. But when it comes to fixed wing, um, it's not something I, I've really, really got much experience in at all. So it's exciting to have an opportunity to get to grips with the glass cockpit in what is a very uh, detailed simulated aircraft with lots of features. And uh, I'm interested to see how I get on. I'm not testing the aeroplane, I'm testing me. And uh, a good point to say a caveat, if you are an expert on glass cockpit, then trust me, there's going to be mistakes. So just be ready for that. But I'm excited to bring this flight to you. We're going to be going from here uh, in uh, Hollywood Burbank over to Las Vegas. Of course, we're taking a VIP passenger. We've rolled out the red carpet. That passenger is, of course, you. I hope you enjoy the flight. Let's get on board and let's get cracking. Well, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that this is not the weather that you just saw. And there's a good reason for that. In short... I'm having to do the flight again. I did the flight last night, had some technical problems uh, and uh, decided that there really was no point showing you that version of it because it wasn't about the aeroplane, it was about the technical issues that I was having. So it's only fair really to the aeroplane that I do another flight and, uh, and that's where we are. So we are next morning again, we are live weather. The weather's actually, you wouldn't think it, not bad. There's hardly any wind. Uh, this is just really some uh, low-level cloud, I think. Uh, we're going to pop above that. Uh, we'll be able to see from the METAR here and also destination what we're looking at. But um, I'm not really that bothered about it. And do you know what? Sometimes uh, live weather is a bit of a gift in that it can throw some additional uh, challenges or lighting or just a different way of looking at the world. Um, so... I'm not bothered about that at all. Right, so let's start at the beginning. The EFB, this is really what you're going to see when you first load in your aeroplane. There is an onboarding process, and I, I did uh, kind of battle with myself whether or not to show this to you, and I decided not to, really because um, the thing about this aeroplane is that you very much feel like you're getting your new aeroplane uh, because of the persistence and the realism in it and the onboarding process is all about that and um, I want to leave that to you if you decide to buy this aircraft so that you can actually see how that works and it's just a nice little it's a nice little introduction to the aircraft um, and it's 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 without wanting to sound soppy it's Roll's way of handing the keys of the aircraft to you and I think that's just such a really cool way of doing it so I'm not going to show you that so here we have uh, pre-flight. Pre-flight is is what it says. It's uh, it's the uh, aircraft mechanic or you yourself looking at the state of the aircraft. This is a brand new aircraft. I've zeroed everything so that we can go back to a brand new state. Um, and you can see here where the where everything is. You notice that there is a um, We've got the air pressure in the tyres, so we can monitor that. We've got the capacity volts of the battery, so we can have a look at that. But you can see everything is, is here. It's just giving you an overview of where you are. Flight plan, I've already loaded in from Simbrief. This has got Navigraph compatibility. I've never used Navigraph in an aircraft before. I've used it separate. I don't fly airliners or things like that. So uh, this for me is new. I know for others, they're probably used to it, but... I just think, you know, it's quite a cool feature, really. I like it. 
So that's our, our flight plan. We can have a look at departure. We can see our meet, our here, and our TAF. Uh, we've got details on the arrival, air, uh, arrival aircraft, arrival uh, airport uh, in uh, Las Vegas. And we've got our meet, our, and again, our, our TAF for that. So we can see there's a bit of cloud, but nothing to, uh, nothing to really get too excited about. Okay, and overall weather, again, we've got our meters again, and if we punch in an ICAO code, uh, we can have a look at that and see uh, see what the score is. And then if you want it, you've got the full SIM brief flight plan uh, in there. I've never looked at these because I don't fly airliners. I don't go through all the, the bits and bobs in it, I must admit, but that information is there uh, should you want it. Um, right, okay, let's go back to uh, charts. Charts is Navigraph charts, so if you've got Navigraph charts, that will appear in here as well. Again, we've got our route. Uh, it's locked to the aircraft at the moment. If I move that around, then you, we can get a better idea of the route here. We've got our layers button, so you can change the, uh, the map that you're using. In fact, I will go back to use that one uh, zoom in and out all that sort of good stuff but also you can you can drag it around we can then go to our um, destination and we can look at the chart so we will be setting that up in fact let's let's set that up now why not so the first thing uh, here at Burbank it's called Bob Hope in the uh, in the sim it's called um, Burbank by Orbex so uh, I'm referring to it as uh, Burbank and also actually on the website for the airport it calls it Burbank but in the sim it's called Bob Hope um, so it's Bob Hope Burbank United States so uh, I'm going to probably call it a mixture just to confuse things anyway what do we want so we want the ground charts uh, we want the airport information and we'll uh, pin that and then we want the uh, departure we're on a Vivera 2 or Vera 2, or v Vera 2, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I'm sure the experts out there, come on, click. The experts out there will know. Uh, right, so we've got our two charts for that that are pinned now. And now we go to uh, Read International. And for that, we want the same thing. We want the ground chart. And boom, we want the ground chart. And then also we want our arrival. I was just thinking about something then. No, I'm not, I won't do it now. Um, we want the arrival, uh, which is a Cresso 05. So we'll close the ground charts, go for arrival, and Cresso 05. There we go. So that is now selected. Thank you very much. And if we go back into here, we can now see we've got all our charts there. And just like in the charts app, uh, you can then have a look around. And you will have your aircraft position on there as well. Like so. Right. Okay. Uh, let's now uh, come out of that. Oh, you can obviously, if you've got head tracking, you can zoom in. Right. The next thing, ground ops. Here we go. This is, uh, this is, uh, this <laughs> is an interesting page to say the least. Very, very clever. So what we got on the left? On the left, we have got the pilot packs cargo and fuel as per my Simbri flight plan. That's basically saying this is what we want adding onto the aeroplane. This is saying this is what we've got. So we've got 17 gallons in each tank uh, from my messing around yesterday. We can see we've got the cabin door open. We haven't got any passengers loaded up. You've not got here yet. Uh, and over here, this is giving us a uh, our kind of situation, as it were. Um, up here, this is where you can change your uh, different bits and bobs, like take the pita cover off, propeller covers, chocks, all that sort of thing. What I will do at this stage is, because we're about to board, I'm going to remove the pito cover, the propeller covers. Uh, I am going to take the chocks off now. Uh, we'll remove the security cones. GPU, I'm not going to be using a GPU start, but I do want to quickly show you something. So if I now connect... We have an animation, we have the door opening. And now we're all connected up.
and it's automatically gone back to the cockpit. I'm going to show you how that works in a little bit, but uh, that's a clever feature. I've now disconnected it. We see the door closing, the hose is disconnected. The little uh, engine stops and we will go back to the cockpit automatically. I'm not changing the views. That's all been done in the sim or rather by this clever piece of software. Um, we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So I'm going to remove the GPU now because we're not going to need it. I'm going to leave the red carpet because we're rolling out the red carpet for you. Um, am I going to show you this now? Am I going to show you this now? Yeah, let's get the ball rolling while we're talking. So you've got two options with loading all this. You can load instant or you can load real time. It's That's what it says on the tin. That means that, boom, everything is there straight away. Or well, that means that we're loading as if it's really happening. And you're going to see that now uh, because I think that's pretty cool. Now, you don't want to sit up here next to me. No, no, no. You want to sit in the back in luxury. So what I am going to do is change that to that. Uh, there we go. Let's just pop that down a little bit. There we go. Try and get it to match the same as the... That's pretty close. You'll be lighter than me, that's for sure. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Everything's fine, happy with that. And now I'm going to click on load real time. And what we see now is the fuel status. We've requested the fuel truck. You are waiting at the terminal FBO. And the luggage, which is going to be coming with you, is waiting for the vehicle as well. So we will just have a quick keep an eye on that. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that's now saying dispatched arrival ETA two minutes. And that really is happening. There really is a vehicle that's been dispatched and is on its way to it. You notice it just went up to three minutes. That's because the vehicle is actually following taxi routes and routes that are coded into whatever airport that you're using. So that will change as it kind of scurries around. It really is an ETA. You see it's now gone down to one minute. Now if we jump outside, you probably can't see it right now, but if you look directly above the uh, vertical stabilizer of my aircraft now, you can just see an, air uh, an aircraft, a vehicle moving in the distance. That's our fuel truck. He's coming to give us our fuel. This is all part of the uh, FSR 500 simulation. This is nothing to do with any other app that I'm using. I don't use GSX. I'll be quite honest with you. I've never, never been tempted to get anything like GSX. I'm not interested in loading baggage, loading fuel, that sort of thing, because I don't really fly airliners. Um, I only fly GA and Warbirds and helicopters, but this is such a cool little feature to have added into the aircraft and it's yet another little bit of immersion uh, that Roll has added to it. He is an expert in this kind of thing, no doubt about that. The fact that you feel you are part of this living world uh, where things are happening is fantastic and if you don't want it you can turn it off, simple as that. So that's the, uh, that's the fuel truck on the way and we will and have another look at that. You're still sitting at the terminal, uh, finishing your coffee. That's absolutely fine. So cabin comfort. Now, this is live weather. So actually, uh, in Vegas at the moment, it is in the middle of the night, really. So that's why it's a little bit cooler than you'd expect. Um, it's actually, I've set the sim time to, I think it's about 8.30 in the morning. So you'd expect it to be a little bit warmer than that, maybe. But um, uh, maybe not, actually. But anyway. That's where we are at the moment there. Oh, we can hear the vehicles just turned up. See if I can... No, can't see him yet. Uh, we'll pop outside in a second. No passengers on board, and here is where we serve and we look after our passengers. We can give them coffee. We can serve a snack. We can organise the pillows for them, bless them. Or we can stow the pillows. That's if you get Larry, you start uh, start a pillow fight. We won't have any of that on the vehicle. There's a fuel truck pulling up. We won't have any of that. You get kicked off and we'll hide your pillows. Simple as that. Uh, cabin status. We'll look at that. A bit more about that in a second. Uh, maintenance uh, does what it says on the tin. This is where you perform your maintenance. And you can go around each spot and you can have a look at the status of everything. Uh, 
it's modelled as well. Brake pads, by the way. If you if you mess up your brake pads, if you're too hard on the brakes, eventually you won't be able to brake, and that could be interesting, for sure. Uh, and then all these uh, all these other systems are are simulated as well. And uh, I'm really excited to see what Raoul does in the future as well, because he he you know has got further plans for this aircraft, so he's just going to add more. Let's have a quick look at ground ops. So the fuel truck is still arriving. Um, again, it. it when he arrives, it didn't suddenly start refueling. It's simulating the uh, fuel truck parking up, him putting his cigarette out, walking round, texting his girlfriend, all that kind of stuff. All that time is built into it. He's just heard him release the brakes. Oh, he's backing up now. <laughs> so cool. Uh, where did I get to? Uh, we were talking about maintenance, weren't we? Right, realism. This is where you set all your realisms. You can see we've got everything to fully realistic. I've turned off allow payload changes during flight. That just means you can't do air-to-air -air refueling. We don't have a probe fitted, therefore we cannot do air-to-air -air refueling. FAC is a FAC, what can I say? That's where you can go if you've got any uh, burning questions that you want to see if you can get a quick answer to. And settings is where we can uh, link up our Navigraph. Let's have a quick look at that. Still arriving. Oh, connecting hose. Right, let's pop outside. So, at the moment, he's connecting the hose. Now, this is a good point to say, why aren't we seeing a figure moving around? Why aren't we actually seeing a human being doing the work? Simple answer is that Roll wasn't happy with the quality of the human being that he could add at this stage. And uh, being a, uh, a man with an eye on quality, He's decided not to include human figures at this point, but it's something that could well happen in 2024, or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, when that kind of thing is going to be more uh, easily available. So at the moment, there's no human figure, but as you can see, we have just connected up our hose and we are now refueling. And if we pop back in, if we pop back in, we can now see the fuel being added to the aircraft. Pretty cool. You're still sitting at the terminal. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know what services they've got here. Maybe they've got a really good Mackie D's or something like that. But, uh, but you're still sitting there. That's fine. And you should be there. You shouldn't really be here when we're refueling anyway. It's not the done thing to uh, have the customer watching the aircraft being refueled. Come on now. Okay, where do we get to? So we're refueling. That's uh, that's fine. Uh, settings. Yes, 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 yes. So. Um, if you are a particularly steely-eyed nutter and you want your aircraft to break down a lot quicker, that's the only easy way of saying it, you can change the rate at which it uh, it does that here. It's actually quite useful, seriously. If you wanted to see what happens when things go wrong, then you can change the rate here and it will give you, uh, give you some nice in-flight emergencies maybe or some broken bits on the ground. Units to measure, you can change that to your preference there. And action cameras. So you remember with the uh, GPU, when I selected that, how we jumped to the outside and it showed us a little, um, showed us what was happening outside and then it jumped back in. That's where we can change that here. So I've got it set to engine startup because I do want to jump outside when that happens so you can hear it. I've got it set up for aircraft exit as well. That's the doors. So we'll see that. Uh, once you've got on board and uh, you are sat sitting and we close the door, you can see what happens there. Landing gear and flaps operation, I've got to off. Um, I might actually... Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to put landing gear on. See what happens there. I mean, we know what's going to happen, but it be interesting for you to see it. And then also we've got auto position EFB. Uh, and um, I've not used that. I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not entirely sure uh, what it does, but I think it uh, it probably just means that um, it, there's a, an automatic... Because I use head tracking, I don't feel I need anything for that, but I presume it means that you can quickly look at the EFB. Oh, thank you very much. There he goes. Thanks for the fuel, mate. There we go. Off with a, a cheery grin and a whistle. Um, so that's what action cameras are all about. Let's go back to ground ops. Uh, you're now getting on the vehicle. Blimey, you took your time. We can see we've got all our fuel, so everything is good there. And uh, everything is fine. 
Okay, just looking at that. Boarding the vehicle still. There we go. Passengers on their way. ETA four minutes. That's fine. Just while you are on the way, uh, what is the temperature? Temperature is eighteen point three. What I will do, we obviously can't do air conditioning at the moment. Just going to put the vent fan on, uh, which isn't going to do anything right now because we haven't got the battery on. But I'm just going to actually no. Let's do it properly. Let's take that off, uh, and then when the battery's on, it's just going to circulate the air a little bit. Okay, so while you are on your way, and I will keep that, uh, I will keep that there because I do want to see you when you turn up, give you a big wave. Um, what we will do is just get the configuration set for my seat. There we go, everything's good. Okay, now let's wait for you. So here we are, and you can see just over there the shiny SUV bringing you along. You know how to travel in style, don't you? You must have a lot of class, or class, depending on what part of the UK you come from, if you come from the UK. And no, I'm not going to say class in a variety of accents to suit all the uh, the watchers, because I wouldn't want to insult you, because whatever beautiful language and beautiful accent you have, um, yeah, I don't want to murder it. So here we go. You can almost hear the regal music. There we go, that's right. Come over here. You wanted to go in the float plane, but you suddenly decided to come with me, didn't you? Uh, as I say, the vehicles will follow taxi routes that are programmed into the scenery. So, uh, for example, here, the driver drives through the wing of that static aircraft. Um, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. That's because it's still following a route, but we happen to have a, a uh, static aircraft there. And now you pull up. As I said before, there's no human figures. We're not going to actually see you. That little beep is to tell me, the pilot, their ear. So let's... So we jump inside. And let's scoot over. And then... This is me just popping my head round the back. Right, how you doing? Yeah, welcome on board. Nothing to worry about here. Hope you've signed the insurance waiver. There we go. It's rather nice in the back, isn't it? A bit jealous. Just heard the door open. And also we have a case on the ground now. That's your case. What a lovely case it is. What a lovely sky blue colour you've chosen. And uh, this is you getting on board now. What will happen is uh, you'll get on. Your bag will be loaded. We'll see the bag disappear. And then that shows us that uh, everything is sorted out. Right, let's have a look. So you are taking selfies. Passenger status, taking selfies. That's all right. I don't blame you. Sorry, you're flirting with the pilot. Well, hello. Uh, now you're getting on board. Again, it's... I love... That is a bit of a laugh. But it kind of adds a little bit of... It. Immersion. Again, it's that word. It's adding immersion. It's adding a little smile to your face. Uh, although you can't see a pi uh, passenger, you're not actually talking to a passenger. It just adds a bit of life to it. Right, so you are now on board. Your case is on board. We can now... Yep, yeah, all right, mate. Cheers. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. Right, cabin door closed. We have a little animation of the cabin door closing. The view was slightly off centre there because I am using head tracking, but you get the idea. So you can see what I mean about those uh, those animations. Okay, right. Let's start going through the checklist. I'm going to pop that back onto there. So before starting engine, passengers boarded door closed and latch. All electrical switches off. Let's have a quick look. I didn't uh, leave that on, did I? Didn't do anything there. Let's have a quick look across the top. Everything is tickety boo. Just noticed that's set tonight. We want that today. And uh, not that it's going to make much of a difference right now. Okay. Um, here we go. Cabin climate controls are all off. We've done that. Nothing switched on there. I think, is that a two way? Yeah, that's a two way. So that's fine. It's not a three way. Uh, the fan is off. That's all off. Cool beans. Circuit breakers are all in. Let's have a look. Circuit breakers are modelled, so we do need to check that. 
Uh, I'm being extra careful because after my technical problems last night, which were nothing to do with the aircraft, by the way, um, I don't want to assume that everything is tickety-boo. Mind you, I've reset it to a new aircraft, so we should be all right. ECA, ECS cabin comfort is uh, all off. It is. That's fine. Parking brake is on. Let's check with my physical controller. There we go. That is uh, on. When do we get to bleed air lever pull off? That is pulled off. Power lever is set to idle. It is set to idle. And uh, condition lever is cut off. Emergency switch. We will check that now. This is emergency power. So it's just uh, if uh, other things go all wrong, then this gives us some emergency power to some systems. So if I press that, we can see that we have got the PFD coming up to give us some uh, information or basic information so we can continue flying the aircraft. There we go. Okie doke. Right. Uh, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Anything else? I just noticed that the uh, interior lights came on, which was interesting. Didn't notice that last night. Um, right. Nav light we will set to on. No power at the moment, but that's ready for when we do put it on. And the battery light, battery switch now goes on. Listen to that paranormal. Lovely. Flaps retract. Flaps are retracted. Fuel gauges check and look for any nasty imbalance. Uh, no imbalance at all. That's absolutely tickety boo. Outside air temperature is uh, 13 degrees because in Vegas now it's the middle of the night and uh, everything else, our fuel is good, our temperatures are good. You can see our fuel and our, where's the oil, uh, there it is, our fuel and oil temperatures are 13 as well because that's what it is outside. So there you go. Uh, and it's nice that all that is modelled as well. Uh, just looking over here, this is the uh, cast. This is basically giving you uh, the um, the information, giving the air crew some basic information. So we can see we've got pitot heat off. We're not in takeoff configuration. Alternator off, generator off, and the prop is feathered. That's just a quick way you can have a look and see if anything is, is out of the ordinary. Uh, and it's just uh, another way that the clever systems in the aircraft help the pilot. Uh, we'll check the fuel now. Uh, fuel. We'll check the fire. Uh, I think I need to hold that in, don't I? Yeah, there we go. Engine fire showing there. We release it. Engine fire is gone, so that's uh, checked that that system is working okay. Have a look at the CAS. Uh, that's the last thing we need to do on the before starting engine, but we've kind of already done that because I jumped ahead wanting to show you how that worked. Okay, so what I am going to do now is we can start the engine. Uh, actually, am I? Am I going to do that now? I think what I'm going to do now is let's do some basic housekeeping first. So we will dial into the ATIS. So let's pull up that. The ATIS frequency is 134.45. You can uh, run the battery down, so I'm conscious that I don't want to do that too much. Uh, so 134.5. Here we go. Copilot's already loaded that in. Let's transfer that. Bob Hope Information Yankee. 953 Zulu winds are calm. Visibility 10 miles. Skies clear. Temperature 13, dew point 2. Current QNH is 1018. Arriving and departing runway 15. Bob Hope Information Yankee, 953 Zulu winds are calm. Visibility 10 miles. Sky. Okay, the interesting thing we're going to have here, and I sometimes get that with Pilot to ATC, is uh, if you listen to the ATIS, it will give you a... Uh, takeoff runway different to the one that Simbrief has put in. So what I do have is I've got it set up in uh, Pilot to ATC to override that. So you'll see when we get our ground clearance, it will give us a different, um, a different takeoff uh, runway. 
Right, OK, so let's call for our clearance and, uh, and then we can get that sorted out. So clearance delivery frequency is 118. So let's dial that in. Uh, here we go. Certainly get some good practice turning the mouse wheel. Switch that over. OK, let's get our IFR clearance now. Clearance delivery, Meridian 234 with information Yankee, ready to copy IFR clearance. Meridian 234 is cleared to Kilo Lima Alpha Sierra. Climb via the Vera 2 departure, with the DAG transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 08. Climb to 12,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 7 minutes after departure. Departure on 120.4. Squawk 3556. Meridian 234 is cleared to Kilo Lima Alpha Sierra. Climb via the Vera 2 departure, with the DAG transition, then as filed. Climb to 12,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 7 minutes after departure. Departure on 120.4. Squawk 3556. Meridian 234 rear back correct. QNH is 1018 contact ground on 123.9 when ready to taxi. Enjoy your morning. QNH is 1018 ground on 123.9 or Meridian 234. There we go. So I've just got the uh, I've got the co-pilot doing the radios today just to uh, try and help with um, help with the uh, workload a little bit. So happy with that. Okay. Right. There we go. So that's that sorted out on the ATC page. So we've got our clearance. Everything's fine. Let's have a quick look at the battery voltage. We're still at 25. That's good. We're not running it down too much. Uh, what we'll do now is start the engine. Then we can load our flight plan into the aircraft. Okay, so uh, auto engine start, which is what we'll be doing. That doesn't mean a like a fake quick start in the... Uh, in the sim, that means using the aircraft systems uh, to start the engine. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, battery voltage is 24 to 26 volts. It is uh, 25, so that's good. Fuel pumps to manual. Left and right fuel pump on CAS message. Left pump on, right pump on, that's all good. Ignition switch to manual. And you can hear that clicking now. We've got the ignition on in the uh, in the cast as well, just to help us with that. Prop area, clear prop. Sorry if I deafened you in the back, but that, by the way, I don't normally shout that loud. Uh, start mode switch to auto. Now, uh, start mode switch is uh, is that button there, and this is something I found last night. Start mode switch um, is uh, in auto if the light is extinguished. If it were one in manual, we'd press it and the light would come on. So you don't actually have to do anything, you're just checking it's in that, that spot. Uh, the start switch is there, and we uh, this is the bit where it gets exciting. So what we're going to do then is we're going to, we're going to press it, we're going to then come down here, we're going to have a look at the NG. Once the NG stabilizes above 13%, uh, then we can introduce some fuel and then we watch everything to make sure that the engine isn't going to blow up. Right, are you ready? Because we're going to jump outside. Quick look down just to check that I have got everything where it should be. Yes, I have. Good. Always, always best to be safe. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. So that's the that's the clever sim doing that, not me changing the views. Right, let's have a look. So the NG is stabilised now. Let's introduce the fuel. And let's have a look what everything's doing. ITT. We don't want that to go too high. We don't want a hot start. That's lovely. Not a hot start. Everything else is rising. All looking good. Smashing. Nice start. Okay, so uh, the NG is stable above 63. It is. Verify 1200 RPM minimum. It is. That's all good. Uh, let's put the uh, close that now because the starter's off. It does that automatically. Generator is now on. So we check for uh, 28 volts and we check that we've got a number uh, positive amps in the generator here. That is all good. Now we switch the alternator on and we have a look and we can see that we've got 24 volts here or 24 amps rather. I should say, uh, showing in the alternator. That's all good. Fuel pump switch to auto and ignition switch off. Oil pressure, we check that now. And uh, we want a minimum of uh, 60. Yeah, and we've got 66. Sorry, looking at the wrong thing. We've got 113. So that's all good. That's the auto engine start checklist complete uh, using the battery there's a slightly different checklist if we were using the um, if we were using the ground power okay before taxi avionics switch on that's up here MFD on so we wait for this to come alive and then we press the soft key to bring it all in now our engine information moves from this PFD over onto the MFD uh, which is rather handy. We have a look at the CAS. CAS is telling us the PITO heat is off and we're not in takeoff configuration. That's absolutely fine. Happy with that. Okay, so the next item on the checklist is the autopilot pre flight test. Now, that isn't implemented at the moment, but what would happen if it was is if we, my understanding anyway, is if we pulled the autopilot uh, circuit breaker which isn't doing anything at the moment. The other ones will do, but that one isn't. Um, if we were to pull that, we get a message coming up in the cast just to show us there was a problem with the autopilot, uh, and then we'd pop it back in and everything is tickety-boo. So that's how, that's how that would work anyway. Right, uh, pitot switch. We put that uh, on. We check operation. We can see the light has gone off here. So that's absolutely fine the indicator in the cast rather so we have the pitot heat off again and that's come back on uh, taxi let's have that on cabin climate controls as required so let's get the aircon on now we'll put it on to low and we'll put that in a middle position this vent fan here really is not connected to aircon it's just literally blowing a bit of uh, air from the outside around. Let's have a look at where you are now. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So at the moment it's 27.2 degrees because the aircraft has been heating up with the doors closed. I put the aircon on now so that should certainly help. You are getting hungry, you're getting thirsty and you are melting because of the temperature here. Again, a nice another bit of immersion that shows us that something is actually happening in the aircraft and gives you uh, gives you something to find well gives you something to keep an eye on right you don't get any snacks or anything just yet we need to get airborne first that's rather important right where do we get to uh, radios avionics check so we've done that we've done the radio calls uh, what I'm going to do now though is we're going to set up our flight plan so we can see the flight plan is actually loaded into the uh, MFD here into the Garmin 1000 but it hasn't actually added the procedures 
and we need to have those so I'm just going to stop my head from bouncing around there we go so we've locked that so the first thing we need to add is our departure which is the uh, Vivira 2 so let's go to the procedure page and we will uh, select a departure there we go let's get there we go get it right I'll get used to these glass cockpits one day and we want the Vivira 2 Vera 2 and the trans oh it's yeah runway 08 and the transition is DAG ATC better give us 08 now so that's all loaded we just cycle down to the review the page everything is good and we load it yes please the next thing we need to do is add the arrival there we go, and the arrival is the Cresso 05 with the DAG transition. And we now review the information in the sequence and we load it, and that's all fine. We'll get our approach uh, as we get uh, close to the airport, so we'll leave that for the time being. All good, so right, that is loaded in. Now, what I'm going to do is if we remember our uh, information before I'm going to load in our squawk oh, come back. Uh, wrong button idiot transponder there we go code um, what am I missing here back Oh yeah, I've got to type it here, idiot. I was waiting for something to pop up here. Uh, what was it? Uh, three, five, five, six. Three, five, five, six is loaded in and we'll keep it in standby. You must remember to change that. We also need to change the uh, barometric here. So that was QNH was 1018. So we will change that on the outside. Here, get the right click spot. There we go. Uh, the other thing we need to do, and that can't be far off actually. Uh, I'm just having a quick look at the chest list. Ch chest list? Good God. Checklist. Not that kind of show. Um, okay, yeah, it's a bit further on in the checklist, so we'll come on to that. Uh, right, flaps are verified up. Let's uh, put the head tracking back in now. There we go. Flaps are verified up. Elevator trim is in takeoff range, which it is, that's good. Rudder trim, that's our little indicator here. We can see that rudder trim is centered. We want it just over there on the green mark, just to help us counteract the torque that we're going to get from the mighty PT-6. There we go. Let's move that over. Nicely done. Uh, bleed air lever in, or button, or plunger, whatever you want to call it. Cabin pressure dump switch. Verify position. Uh, no, it's down here. Looking at the wrong panel. There we go. Cam pressure dump switch is not on. We are not dumping. Nobody needs to panic about that. ECS cabin comfort switch we can now put to normal. Uh, the the whole pressurisation thing is, is handled by the aircraft. We don't have to mess about with that. Uh, with the King Air you have to set it on the dial. Uh, with this aircraft we don't have to do that. But what we do have to do is we now have to put the destination elevation into the Garmin. So let's check that. I'm going to put the there we go. I'm just locking the head track again so it doesn't do your head in. Um, we now just need to cycle through. There we go. Put it onto Barrow. And then we are going to put the uh, destination elevation in, which, if I now put the head tracking back on, we go back to flight plan and we can see that the Elevation destination is 2181. So we just. I've got 
going to lock the head track again to make that easier. Come on, back we go. Give the finger some more exercise. Just there's a quicker, quicker way of doing that. Two one eight one was what we wanted. We'll just verify that. Keeping on turning the mouse wheel. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Two one eight one. We're getting there. Seriously, if anyone does know a quicker way of doing this, please, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm turning the mouse wheel to uh, to get here, but if you know of a quicker way, I'm more than willing to try that. 2181, so we'll go for 282180 and enter. Uh, let's just have a quick look over there, just make sure I've got that right. 2181, that's fine. And boom. Cool. Okay, let's just double check that's taken. Yes, it has. Okay. Right, so we've done that. Uh, stall warning test switch. Where did I see you? There we go. Stall, 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 stall. Thank you. That's working nicely. Right, standby flight instrument. Verify on. I think that is this. Uh, I think that is that. Might be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Uh, altimeter set, we've done that. Parking brake release. Well, we're not going to do that quite yet, but that's what we will do uh, before taxing. So, a quick check for myself. We've completed the before taxing checklist. I've loaded the flight plan. Uh, they said 12,000 feet, note feet, not flight level. So, I'm going to put uh, 12,000 feet into. Uh, Just trying something different there, but if I can, uh, no, how about that way? Just keep the button pressed down and it does it for you. So we're going to go to 12,000. Learning new things all the time. The great thing about a flight like this is that you learn new stuff as you go. Certainly for me, anyway, it's a good way of finding out what your weaknesses are and what you need to uh, what you need to learn. By the way, while I'm here talking about uh, learning stuff, we have a Discord. I'll put a link down below. We talk about aeroplanes, we post screenshots, we have group flights. Great community of people, some really clever people there as well. And uh, if you have any technical questions relating to simming, could be anything, it's always worth popping there um, to the community help uh, channel on the Discord and uh, posting your questions there. Very lucky to have some very clever people on there. And it's a great community as well. Good laugh. Okay, right, so we've done that. Uh, I've added that in there. So just setting it up, I'm going to uh, pop in nav for when we need it. And uh, I've got that set up and then I'll be doing vertical speed. We can also do the flight level change, which I'm going to, I've not done yet. So I'm going to experiment with that once we get, uh, once we get airborne. Experiment? That's not something you want to hear, is it? Right, okay. Let's come back over to uh, ATC and let's get ready to ask for our clearance. Not our clearance, our taxi clearance. God, I hope they send us to the right runway. Uh, what was the last thing? Ground on one two three decimal nine. Uh, let's check the radio one two three. So the co-pilot is already dialed in one two three decimal nine, and I will make the call. Right. Okay. So I've just remembered we need to remove the red carpet because you're in there. We don't need that anymore. Uh, because I've been looking things up and sitting on the ground, we have used up some fuel, which uh, is not ideal, uh, to be honest. But uh, we should be all right. We should have plenty of range. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, as, as things get quicker and also because I'm making a video, there's a couple of things I want to get right. So sometimes I'm kind of looking just to check something and uh, obviously that takes time, which you wouldn't normally do if you were uh, operating the aircraft. How are you getting on? Temperatures, uh, it says passengers are hot. Temperature is coming down though, so that's good. Right, you need to put your seatbelt on. There we go, you've got your seatbelt on now. And uh, that's all tickety-boo, right. Grand Meridian 234 ready for taxi. Meridian 234 taxi to runway 08 via taxiways Delta 7, Charlie 6, Delta, Charlie, hold short runway 08. Taxi to runway 08 via taxiways Delta 7, Charlie 6, Delta, Charlie, hold short runway 08 Meridian 234. So that's a strange one. So uh, I do sometimes find this with um, Pilot to ATC. You can you can correct taxiways, but so it's saying uh, to go via Delta Seven, which makes sense. Charlie Six, but that's over there, and then Delta, which is coming back up here, and then Charlie, which is down there. So I'm going to ignore the taxi instructions. We're just going to go Delta down to uh, Bravo there. Bravo, what am I talking about? Runway 8, losing my mind. Right, okay, so we need to get going. Uh, where are we? Taxing, checklist. Taxi area clear, it is. Power lever advanced slowly. Uh, minimum 1200 RPM, and we check the brakes and we do all that. What I will be doing, of course, is taxing on beta. Uh, but just to get us going, I'll just nudge us forward. So let's. Uh, Release the parking brake. Let's check the brakes. Brakes are working fine. Okay, and now let's start moving and down into beta. You can't see this because I'm concentrating. There we go. So I've got the controller set up so that I can. Uh, I'm on the Honeycomb Bravo, and there's a way that you can set that up so you can use the detent to switch between normal and uh, and beta. There we go. Got a minimum of 1200 RPM, which is what we wanted, so that's absolutely fine. A quick look down. Yeah, that's good. So let's stabilise. Then, if I, you can see, if I move my throttle forward now, it's going towards the reverse situation. on the speed we don't want to go too fast but a fair old speed is absolutely fine I hope you're doing okay in the back so we can see our position here on the chart we've got our synthetic vision on the Garmin 1000 as well which is kind of cool Meridian 234 contact tower on 118.7 have a nice flight. Tower on 118 decimal 7 Meridian 234. Right, okay, that's all good. Let's now do the engine run up test. So uh, there's no wind, so I'm not pointing into wind, which we would normally do. So, parking brake is on. Power lever to 1900. Oh, must remember I need to take it out of beta. There we go. Beta, depending on how you want to pronounce it. There we 
go. Right, overspeed governor, where is it? Uh, there it is. Check that. And when we press this, we are observing that there's a drop of 60 RPM. That's right, that's good. And now we release it and we'll come back up. Close the cover on that. And uh, now we're going to uh, check the reverse lockout. So for that one, I'm going to press it and hold. I'm then going to put us back into beta, which I need to fiddle there. And then now if I try and put it into reverse, you see how the aircraft is fighting it there? So as I move the lever, the lever will move, but then it will go back to that position. So that shows that that lockout is working as well. So we can uh, cancel that and I'll now put us back into normal throttle mode. Uh, right, power lever, retard, confirmed beta, inverse not available, we've done that. Generator switch, off. Confirm alternator takes the load. It has done, we can see there's an increase on the alternator there. And then we put the generator switch back on. And then you can see how that alternator number's now gone down, generator has taken that in there. Right, before takeoff checklists, let's do that now. Generator switch is on, alternator switch is on. Let me just hold this up so I can see it in my line of sight. I've actually got a printed off checklist, that's why I'm doing that. Bleed air lever is in, ECS cabin comfort is set to normal. Fuel temperature, check within limits, yep, that's all good. Fuel pump switch to manual. Ignition switch to manual. Pito heat on. Uh, where you gone? There you go. Pito heat is on. Ice protection not required. Uh, taxi, we will leave that on there. Landing light we can now put on as we're about to enter the runway. Nav light is already on. Strobe light we will now put on. Flight instruments. Let's have a quick look down. Check that everything is looking fine, and it is. Uh, we can see here we've got some, uh, informa there's some information in the CAS that's telling us what's happening here. We've set the QNH, so that's all good. I'm not seeing anything uh, anything wrong there. Uh, right, what are we looking at now? Uh, flight instruments checked, we've checked the CAS. Engine instruments, are we okay there? Yeah, that's all looking fine and within limits. Radio transponders, we've set that, we were about to go to, or the co-pilot has set us onto tower, so we're going to be doing that. We're not going to be using flaps for takeoff, so flaps are set to zero. Elevator and rudder trim, elevator is within the takeoff, and also the, uh, where was it, the rudder trim is on the little green notch as well, so that's telling us that that's all good. And flight controls. Yeah, that's all good. Quick look out the window, we can see things moving as well. Marvellous. Uh, right. Let's put the timer on now. And start. There we go. We can turn the timer off. Right. I believe we are all ready to go. So we're going to take the runway now, but we're going to call up tower first. Tower Meridian 234, ready for departure, runway 08. Meridian 234, winds are calm, QNH is 1018, cleared for takeoff, runway 08, squawk 3556. Go. Cleared for takeoff. Looks all good. Runway 08 squawking 3556 Meridian 234. Okay, let's roll. See uh, the low cloud has uh, come in a bit more. We can't see the mountains now, which is a shame because that would have uh, that would have been quite nice. But uh, oh, we just see them over there. I think it'll be nice once we get going, once we get in the air. Right. Let's change the uh, move the heading bug. 
to the uh, way heading. Come on. I need to find a way of speeding that up. There we go. Okay, so that's all good. Right. Where is it? Takeoff checklist, brakes supplied, power lever will set to take off, brakes release, that's okay. SB the live at 60 knots and rotate 85 knots. Are we okay with everything else? Okay, let's do this. Just check my head tracking there. Right, now the eagle eyed amongst you will have noticed that conditions have uh, changed somewhat. And that's because uh, I've had to start again. Unfortunately, a few technical issues, nothing to do with the aeroplane, uh, everything to do with me, really, just trying to uh, get my ATC to marry up with what's happening in the Garmin. And uh, due to my inexperience, I've had to, a couple of times, um, ended up in a situation where I was just really circling, trying to figure things out, which does not make a good video for you. So, uh, I normally like to show my mistakes um, because I think it sometimes helps other people. In this case, it doesn't. It's just purely my inexperience, not quite understanding how something's working. Uh, very simply, it's down to do with this uh, final waypoint here, Mansec, and then trying to get over to Chum. For some reason, it wasn't uh, the Garmin wasn't switching from Mansec to Chum. Um, I was trying to select the next waypoint, it wouldn't select me chum, but it would let me select the one after that, which was no good. Long story short, I'm just starting again, and what I've realised now is what I need to do is just get to Mansec, then uh, unsuspend on the, uh, uh, for the next part, for the departure, and then take it from there, so uh, let's get going. Anyway, let's apply some power. very gentle and it's very sensitive on the rudder so I've got to remember that it always catches me by surprise that okay let's release and there we go watch that that's it keep it on keep it on keep it on focus Speed to live and rotate. Must ready to climb gear up. So now into our turn. I always notice that the uh, frame rates over by LA absolutely get hammered. And anticipating fairly soon ATC is going to give us a heading to Suspend that. We're now heading towards 
chum, which is great. We're in the climb. Let's have a look outside. Oh, before we do that, let's quickly do the uh, after takeoff checklist or the, the climb checklist. So, power lever is uh, fine, that's where it should be. Fuel pumps are auto, ignition auto, uh, landing light off, taxi light off, ice protection don't need, engine instruments, torque. Great. That's absolutely. That'd be a one three one three max. And it's below that. ITT is below seven seventy, so that's good. And NG. Uh, that's a one oh one max. And we're below there, so that's all good. Climb speed uh, it should be about 125, so we are climbing a little bit slowly, so we can bang the nose up a bit. We'll have a play with the flight level change in a bit. Now we're tracking towards Chum. See, it's still got that waypoint there as selected, which is what I didn't want. This is what happened the first time. It hasn't switched it through, and I don't really understand why. And if I go onto the flight plan now, so I'll show you. Go onto the flight plan. Um, what is it? Is it that one? No. No. There we go. And then move to Chum, and then press Menu. It won't give me Activate Leg as the next one, and that's the problem. That's the problem I'm having. So we'll see what it does. I might have to hand fly it. There's, uh, there's a shock. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is put it into a heading. Get us to chemo. I am not going to start this video again. <laughs> so we're just going to manually head to chemo. And then what I'm going to do now is uh, flight plan. Head to chemo. Menu. Activate leg. Activate. There we go. And then let's put it back onto nav. There we go. So that's all looking good. That's all looking good. So, what did we learn from that, Rob? We learned that if we don't fly over that initial waypoint, uh, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to like it. It's going to keep it selected. So, we've got to be very careful. Center on one three two decimal eight five. Have a good morning. Center on one three two decimal eight five. Meridian two three four. Have a good morning. So, got to be very careful to uh, if ATC. Climbing to one seven thousand feet. Meridian two three four. Good morning. QNH is one zero two one. QNH is one zero two one. Meridian two three four. Got to be very careful um, to uh, try and get over that waypoint to. Uh, make sure that as far as the Garmin is concerned it's seen it. Ordinarily, normally, as far as I'm aware, I should have just been able to select um, the next waypoint that I wanted to, but I think there's something going on with the Garmin. It's nothing to do with, um, nothing to do with the FSR 500, because the Garmin is, uh, is uh, I think it's WT. Um, 
there's something quite where it won't allow you to select that next waypoint so hand fly into that waypoint and then select the next waypoint that the system will allow me to and everything is good okay right so we are doing okay I'm just doing, going to increase the power ever so slightly T's and P's are looking fine fuel is looking good We are following the flight plan and the autopilot is behaving itself. We are in a climb, albeit very slow and uh, interestingly, why are we... Okay, it's levelling out, that's because Meridian I haven't two, finished... Three, four, climb and maintain one seven thousand feet. Climb and maintain one seven thousand feet, Meridian 234. Sorry ATC. My fault because I got distracted. This is why flights like this is so, for me anyway um, are so good for training because it's 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 the ATC, it's the flight plan, it's the IFR, it's a new aeroplane. It's a great way to find out where those pressure points are, where your weaknesses are, um, where you need to uh, to really concentrate on. So. Things going wrong, things not working smoothly is fine by me because it's all training. At the end of the day, this is all about learning. It always makes me chuckle a little bit. Sometimes you see comments about people saying about YouTubers making uh, mistakes and YouTubers not doing it by the book and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. That's because most of us aren't experts. Most of us aren't... Uh, real-world pilots with time on type. We are just flight simmers like anybody else and we make mistakes and uh, it's very easy to uh, comment on a video or comment on a forum saying, oh these YouTubers, oh. but mistakes happen. <laughs> That's what it's about. It would be a very boring hobby if it was all easy and smooth, wouldn't it? Um, it is all about learning and that's what I love about it. That's what I love about an aircraft like this. Glass cockpit is very new to me. Uh, Garmin 1000 is very new to me. So uh, I'm just learning and this is a great way to learn. When things aren't going right, this is, this is a fantastic way to learn. So I am quite happy with that. that because I was uh, I was busy expedite climb to flight level two three zero busy taking screenshots very unprofessional of me but we did get a climb instruction to go to two three zero so let's do that before we uh, upset air traffic more than we already have doing in the back? Let's have a look. You're still wearing your seatbelt. Well done. You're hot. Let's turn you down a bit. There we go. Uh, everything else is fine. You are not too hungry or thirsty at the moment. But don't worry, we can sort that out for you. Let's have a look. Have you made a mess in the back? No. That's good. Excellent. Those cushions do move, by the way. If you chuck the aeroplane around, they do move. That's why we have this uh, ability to tidy them up. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, that is so nice to see. We are on course. No problems. Let's check everything else. T's and P's are good. Still climbing. I think... Uh, now, did she say flight level? She said flight level. We are above, we are just actually crossing the, uh, you can tell I'm getting excited. We are just crossing, or we've just crossed the transition altitude. 
So uh, we need to, right, let me think about this because I've got to remember, I've got to remember how I did it. way you can do it, there's a button, um, which I'm probably, yeah, it's not that one. People who use the uh, Garmin now are screaming out, it's that one. There it is, PFD options. If you press that, it goes to standard uh, barometric pressure. There you go. So I'll do it that way and uh, we'll leave that in. So, for my memory, PFD options, and then that will do that. Okay, cool. So, how are we doing? Speed is okay, climb is okay. Very nice views out there. I do love this sim for the views. The fact that you're actually seeing what's down there. I have noticed recently uh, my FPS is a little bit slower than it used to be. Nothing to do with this aeroplane, I've noticed it in some other things as well. Um, so I need to investigate that a little bit. And see what's going on. Apart from me needing a new processor. seems to have gone off when we hit uh, surely that can't be right right so we are now in the cruise and we need to get our correct cruise power setting so let's uh, I've just got the manual on my iPad let's get to the relevant section which takes a while because it's a good manual there's a heck of a lot of information in here an awful lot to learn Have a look. There we go. So outside air temperature is uh, where's it gone? Minus twenty. So let's have a look. Minus twenty. Get the correct page. Minus twenty. We're at uh, 23,000 feet. So it's 1267 is what we want.
notice the cushions on the floor there. Someone has been having a bit of a pillow fight, so let's just go back to the cockpit, if you bear with me. There we go, and we will press that button there. And let's go back, and they should be, if I've understood it correctly, back on the chairs. Look at that. Excellent. Right, quick, quick look at everything. Power's good, speed is good. No issues there. We're level at uh, high level 230. We are on course. And uh, yeah, happy with that. That is a relief. very uh, atmospheric if you just look at the texture there on the combing um, you certainly do feel like you are sitting in a, a nice tangible cockpit it really does feel quite wonderful Meridian 
It's changing the speed. Oh, hello. Now it's come alive. Now it's coming back up again. Not really sure how that works, if I'm honest. Do I pull back on the power first? And then flight level change? Maybe that's it, I don't know. Well, we're descending. You can see over here, uh, NAP1 has actually changed the ILS frequency in Las Vegas now, which is good. So we're in a descent, we're maintaining the speed, 176. I guess that's the trick, you need to pull back on the power first and then go into flight level mode, which kind of makes sense, because flight level mode is just trying to maintain uh, the speed using the uh, using pitch, so yeah, that makes sense. Give it less power, it's going to have to pitch down to maintain that speed. It's amazing what you learn, isn't it? Oh yeah, I was going to read back this thing, wasn't I? Descend by the Cresso 5 arrival with the DAG transition to cross Huxar at or above 5,000 feet. Q&H is 1021 Meridian 234. If I sound like a robot, it's because, uh, you know, you have to... Um, it's speech recognition, so that has to, that has to work out nicely. Now at this rate we're not descending pretty quickly, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, so presumably if I increase the speed, no, that didn't work, it didn't do what I expected, so if I, yeah, it's because I was doing it the wrong way, there we go. be very gentle because that's quite a fast rate of descent. Maybe this isn't the mode you'd use for a long term descent like this. I mean flight level change I guess is just hopping between flight levels. So that kind of makes sense. So let's do it another way. Let's go uh, vertical speed mode. And then the flight plan descent, where was the flight plan descent? I saw it somewhere. It was 1,200 feet. So um, let's go for that. There we go. And we'll do it that way. Pull back on the power a bit. Perfect. Can't help but think descending a little bit early. Maybe I was a little bit trigger happy there because it mentioned the DAG transition. Um, I think the uh, top of descent is actually a little bit further up. Be interested to see if ATC tells us off actually. in the back. Have you finished your snack? Yeah, look, you finished your snack. That's all good. Keeping an eye on the speed, making sure that we don't uh, go over the top. checklist really should have done that a bit earlier on and when we started descending so defog if required not on ice protection not on power lever set to desired torque have done that altimeters uh, set to cross check I'm still on standard I 
okay, part of me is saying that because we are above the transition altitude, we should be still on standard barom barometric. Another part of me is thinking we're descending to 5,000 feet, therefore perhaps we should have QNH uh, in the box. I'm going to... Meridian uh, 234, contact Los Angeles Center on 124.62, have a nice day. Center on 124.62, Meridian 234. I'm going to bang in the QNH. Center Meridian 234 descending to 5,000 feet. Meridian 234, good morning. Again, any uh, any real world pilots out there, <coughs> I'd be interested to know uh, what the procedure is on that one, that little point of order there. Uh, part of me is thinking if you're given instruction to descend two feet, that means you have to select QNH, almost ignoring the transition altitude. And also interesting that uh, ATC is uh, is acknowledging that we are descending to 5,000 feet. So we uh, the TOD that I'm looking at on the um, uh, ATC planner map is still up ahead, but it's told us to descend to 5,000 feet. So that's what we're going to do. T's and P's good. Plenty of uh, plenty of fuel, and uh, fuel is balanced. Cannot bad. So we are actually coming up now for the airspeed, uh, airspeed, 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 airspeed. Yeah. Air. Keep an eye on that, you donut. that has that warning, eh? So let's go into charts and come out of route and we'll now get the arrival up. There we go. So I'm just going to uncheck that. So it's going to take us to VLD, uh, and at this point, I guess it's a manual, or I don't know if we'll be vectored. The actual approach has a. Um, okay, that's all right. So it's meant to be turning. The actual approach has a transition point just round about there, but for some reason we're not using it. speed. It's really handy having these charts in here. Um, uh, I do have Navigraph charts open on another screen and uh, I'm really not having to use it. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close it just if anything to see if that makes life a little easier on uh, wow that has completely improved the frame rate I wonder if having charts open in the aircraft and also on another screen was uh, hammering the system but that's so much smoother now that will make life easier when we uh, look at the landing. Let's wind things out a bit. All looking good. I will resist the temptation to sing Viva Las Vegas for your health and mind. It must be incredible doing this flight, for real. I've 
I've uh, been to Vegas once on business, so it was a uh, suited and booted routine. Didn't really see much of, uh, of Vegas, actually. Certainly didn't see anything outside of Vegas apart from the plane. And uh, But I remember sitting looking out of the hotel window, looking at the mountains, just imagining what it would be like to stand over there. It was almost like imagining standing on the moon, having never um, been in a, uh, you know, been in that environment to imagine what it was like and to actually see it but not be able to get to it, that was, uh, that was frustrating. Now, something else we have here, but we've not really used it, but uh, hopefully we won't get interrupted. I will just turn off the head tracking. Uh, I've not done this before, but I think this is what we do. So we go to map options and um, not that. Is it in menu? New. There we go. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Oh. Weather radar. Now we have the weather radar on. And uh, we've got no weather, so you're not going to see anything, but gives you an idea of how that uh, how that actually works airspeed 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 air Come back on the throttle that's what happens when you're messing about so let's come out of that uh, menu I'm trying to remember how to uh, I know it's this one isn't it so we want Navigation map, please. There we go. Just wanted to show you that it's got that capability, but uh, we don't need it today. And of course, the uh, radar, it was the little pod that you can see under the wing. So, where are we? 10,280, that's fine. Gentle descent. Let's have a look at the procedure here. Four contact Las Vegas approach on one two zero decimal four five. Enjoy your morning. Approach on one two zero decimal four five meridian two three four. Approach meridian two three four descending to five thousand feet. Meridian two three four. Good morning. Continue descent via the Kasu 5 arrival, or the ILS Yankee approach to runway 26 left at Reed International. Continue descent via the Creso 5 arrival, or the ILS Yankee approach to runway 26 left Meridian 234. All looking nice. Something I've got to remember today is that when I did this flight yesterday, um, my landing was uh, was very floaty. I uh, the aeroplane did not want to settle down, so uh, I think I was probably a bit too cautious with the power, and of course with the turbo prop, there is so much power. Um, I seem to remember in the manual it says that you you chop the power to idle when you cross the threshold. I just think it's amazing. That's what you'd see in the real world. That's not an add-on, that's just baked into the sim. Still amazes me and I probably bore you senses by saying it in every video. But I do love it. An aircraft like this that's got so many features that's absolutely full of immersion, scenery like that, 
uh, you know, it is just incredible. Descending, heading towards mountains is always a, uh, a slightly unnerving thing. Um, I am slightly uh, nervous that we might be too low, but I'm just going to trust in ATC at the moment. But part of me can't help but think, as beautiful as it is to uh, be looking at those mountains, that it does feel a little bit low. So I'm going to be watching that like a hawk. Again, possibly we uh, descended a little bit too early maybe, or maybe had too high a uh, descent rate. Because I don't really think we should be this low at this point. I'm honest, uh, and again, that's uh, my fault. Okay, hands off everything. Let's see what happens. Yeah, autopilot didn't disengage, so it just goes to show it was my. Uh, me accidentally brushing the trim wheel that caused the issue. Just applying the power now that we're uh, on the level. Yeah, we definitely descended way too early, there's no doubt about it. I wonder if perhaps I uh, shouldn't have assumed when they said descent to 5,000 feet uh, when we were given the uh, the arrival instruction. Um, I think I probably should have uh, held off descending a bit. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to climb to um, 7.3 on there. get a bit of height. So what lesson have I learnt there? Maybe not to descend so early when uh, ATC gives the uh, arrival clearance. It's silly really because the, the ATC program actually has a nice TOD marker on the map. I should have really uh, taken notice of that.
actually even says there 7300 above 7300 at Boulder. So I should have taken notice of that as well. That's a, a clue. That's Las Vegas over there. much of it yet. This feels like a better height to be at at this stage in the game, doesn't it? So we're coming up to Boulder. Let's zoom in now. I'm interested to see what the that the wrong way the first time. Interesting to see what the Garmin Radio does now. Two, three, four, you are one, four nautical miles southeast of Reed International Airport. Cleared for the ILS approach to runway 26 left at Reed International. Cleared direct Huca contact tower on 119 decimal 9 a good morning. Cleared for the ILS approach to runway 26 left. Cleared direct Hilksar Tower on 119 or decimal 9 or Meridian 234. Okay, so it's saying cleared direct Hilksar, so Tower if I... Tower Meridian 234 inbound for ILS approach runway 26 left. Meridian 234 continue ILS to runway 26 left call when established on final. Continue ILS approach to runway 26 left will call when established on final Meridian 234. Just want to see what the autopilot does Meridian now. Meridian 234 QNH is 1021 at Reed International. Brilliant. QNH so it's picked is 1021 Meridian 234. Picked it up automatically. Excellent. So now we need to uh, get a descent going. So the autopilot is actually going to uh, Relin rather than Huxar, but that's okay. I'm happy to stick with the autopilot's choice at the moment. QNH 1021, QNH 1021, we've got that dialed in. Watching the speed. Descent to 5,000 feet, which is where we needed to be over Huxar. Actually, I tell a lie. Look, it is actually taking us to Huxar. Garmin, I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, my lord. I thought it was going to take us that way. Okay, let's get ready for this. Come back on the power. Right, approach autopilot. Uh, approach check. Autopilot, we disengage below it. Knots, uh, fuel pumps to manual. Uh, landing light on. Check fuel quantity and balance. Balance is good, quantity is good. You in the back need to put your seatbelt on. Thank you very much. Should have done that earlier, maybe. Uh, what else have we got? That's good, that's good, that's good. Landing gear below 168, we're not quite ready to do that just yet. Well, I suppose we are actually. I suppose we are. So we've got 
localizer glide slope. I am going to drop the gear now. Oh, there's our little animation. I've forgotten I've got that set up. And back in here, and now I'm going to disengage the autopilot. We are a tad high. I didn't have the autopilot in approach mode. So let's just get that sorted out. One notch of flap. Meridian 234 established final runway 26 left. Meridian 234 winds are calm cleared to land runway 26 left. Clear to land runway 26 left Meridian 234. Interesting using a Garmin to fly an ILS. Kind of overshot the glide slope there. So just trying to come back on that. We're off on the localizer a little bit. over here, especially as we're getting lower, still to the right of the localizer, so some more flap, too high now, window and not uh, checking the localizer so let's bring that back in I definitely need to look at some curves or something for my rudder pedals because uh, they are so sensitive in this aeroplane sensitive. and we are now off the runway. Meridian 234 is clear of active. 
Meridian 234 welcome to read international contact ground on 121 decimal so, 1. Enjoy your so. morning. Ground on 121 decimal 1 Meridian 234. Ground Meridian 234 request. Tuck. Meridian 234 <laughs> this is Las Vegas ground on 121 decimal 1 go ahead. Meridian 234 request taxi to parking. Meridian 234 taxi to general aviation parking via taxiways Alpha 5, Alpha 4, Alpha, Alpha 3, Bravo, Charlie 2, Charlie, Charlie 1, Quebec, Romeo, hold short runway 26 left, and runway 26 right. Taxi to general aviation parking <coughs> via taxiways Alpha 5, Alpha 4, Alpha, Alpha 3, Bravo, Charlie 2, Charlie, Charlie 1, Quebec, Romeo, hold short runway 26 left, and runway 26 right meridian 234. Now I'm not going to make you sit through all that, so I'm just going to head over there and uh, I'll see you when we get there. Right, so here we are coming in. We're just going to park up around here. FPS over here by uh, nearer to Vegas is absolutely shocking. your limo is waiting. There we go. Okie doke. So let's uh, just get that out of the way. Let's get the parking brake on. Okay, after landing. Timer. Need to uh, stop that. I really am useless I'm trying to use these controls. There we go. These little click spots and things. Uh, right, timer, fuel pumps, auto. heat off ice protection we don't have landing lights we can have the landing lights off keep the nav lights on or do we uh, strobe light off we retract the flaps we've already done that transponder going to leave that as it is parking brake is set uh, Cabin comfort now to off. Power lever to idle. Let's take it out of beta now and put it to idle. Um, what did I get to? Climate cabin controls off. That's already off. Let's double check that. Okay, fuel pump switch now to off. Avionics switch to off. Generator switch and alternator switch to off. Let's hold this up so it's in my sight line so I don't have to keep bobbing my head around. ITT uh, stabilised for two minutes while we've been sat sitting for a while so it's uh, certainly done that without any issues. Condition leader cut off feather. Lead air out. Lovely sound. Stereo lighting switch is off. And now, last but not least, 
Battery off. Let's now go to uh, Cabin Comfort, see how you're getting on. You can now unbuckle. And we can go to Ground Ops. And we can Pito cover. Propeller cover. We'll let you out. Actually, we should have done that, shouldn't we? There we go. And uh, chocks and security cones and the red carpet. Now you can get out. I'll get there. We go. Got the click spot. So there you go. Well, marvelous aeroplane. A lot for me to learn. A lot, certainly a lot for me to practice. I'm going to do a few more of these flights. Um, certainly need to speed up on the checklist and that sort of thing. But that's only natural with a new aeroplane. But uh, certainly a lot to get into, and this aeroplane is, is certainly very capable indeed. Uh, looking forward to flying it at night and also in some bad weather as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the flight. hope you did. hope you found it useful. And I look forward to seeing you on the channel again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.